Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series. I am so happy you're here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you don't know if this is your first episode checking this out, uh, welcome. This is the show where we talk about our giveaway bikes. So this is one of them right here, the uh, 2019 Yamaha YZF R3. And we also have a 2018 uh, Suzuki SV650 up for grabs. I am giving them away for free. Click the link below on our Patreon to learn more about how you can get started to win. Or if you want, you can buy some merch and every dollar you spend gets you one entry to win. So click those links and check that out. But today, I thought it'd be fun to walk through everything that's different about the 2019 Yamaha YZF R3 versus the first version of the R3. Uh, fun fact, I used to own a 2015 R3, so I'm pretty familiar with the platform. I put about 18,000 miles on my R3, so I'm pretty familiar with it. It's been really interesting owning this new version of it, but I thought it'd be cool if we went through in depth and took a look at everything that's different about this bike versus the 2015 model. So let's take a look. So discerning eyes among you, uh, saying that sarcastically, won't notice that the first thing that is different about the 2019 Yamaha R3 versus the old one is the new upgraded looks. Um, let's walk around the bike here really quick and point out all the differences and changes they have made. So as we walk around here on the bike, uh, I'll have a picture up here probably of the old 2015 Yamaha R3, uh, the last generation, so you can notice the differences. But um, first up, of course, are the headlights. The front light and the rear brake lights are now LEDs, which is pretty sweet. Um, this entire front end is kind of reworked and changed. Um, they went through and made the gas tank a little bit lower and wider. It also comes with these cool little MotoGP style accentuations here, kind of matches the uh, R1 in terms of that. The side fairings here are all new as well. Um, there's a really interesting, uh, from what I understand, you can take out these uh, fairings pretty simply and then slide in a Yamaha factory uh, frame slider option that doesn't cut the, fr uh, the fairing. So pretty cool addition to the bike there. As far as I can tell, the rear end is largely unchanged. Other than the lights here, uh, it seems like a pretty standard uh, Yamaha R3 setup back here. Doesn't look too, too different. Um, but overall, a pretty big styling change for the R3 and definitely places it in the contention for the best looking uh, beginner bike in the class, I would say. Uh, it's a really sharp looking motorcycle, as you can tell. Uh, I think my favorite feature of the looks, of the upgraded looks, is this little air duct right here. Uh, even though it doesn't lead anywhere, uh, it's still pretty cool to see and it gives it a really, uh, you know, distinctive kind of look to it. Um, if we can turn on the lights here, you notice that it gives it a really, really sweet look. It's a great looking motorcycle. You really cannot fault them for that. So definitely one of the first major changes you'll notice is the looks. As I mentioned in the other video I made, and I've talked about this before, Yamaha did not change these turn signals. So this is still the same bulbous unit from uh, every other Yamaha they've been making since forever, since like the 90s, I think. So that's definitely an old spot there for them. The other major change that they made is that now the Yamaha R3 rocks proper uh, Sportmax Dunlop uh, radial tires. They're no longer the bias ply units that used to come on the other R3. I'll put up a picture of what those used to look like. And this just gives you a much more planted feel. It actually feels like a proper sport bike tire. Um, I have no idea why Yamaha went with a bias ply tire in their last bike, but that is definitely a welcome change for uh, 2019 with these new tires. I really, really enjoy them. I'm trying to talk to you about these sweet, sweet tires I got on my bike. Oh, oh my man. Another welcome tweak that Yamaha made to this motorcycle is the clip-ons here. As you'll notice, they are now mounted underneath the triple clamp, which gives you a more forward-leaning kind of uh, 
uh, ergonomics package to this motorcycle before these clip-ons were actually placed above the triple clamp right here and so you had a much more upright position so it makes the r3 a little bit more sporty a little bit more fun to ride um, and it's a really really welcome change it's actually a modification i did to my r3 i put on the uh clip-ons underneath the triple clamp just like this so recently i actually took these clip-ons that were on the bike right around here and i put them right under the triple clamp it's really cool to see it from factory and also you'll notice that the triple tree now has all these little vents on them right here as well it just kind of looks a little bit cooler a little bit more polished so Good on Yamaha for doing that. Now, again, those of you with keen eyes will notice that the Yamaha R3 now sports uh, nice new upside down forks. Uh, for those of you who are complete beginners, the forks are the suspension components right here on the motorcycle. Um, the original 2015 Yamaha R3 featured right side up forks that were pretty budget, pretty normal, kind of standard uh, motorcycle uh, forks, really nothing to write home about. But these new uh, 37 millimeter KYB forks are pretty sweet, a really, really welcome upgrade for this class of bike. And you can honestly really, really feel it. The uh, KYB forks actually have uh, an increased rebound damping by 120% with compression damping up by 380%. So actually, the front end here on the Yamaha R3 is actually much tighter and much sharper than it was on the 2015 model. Actually, one of the complaints I had about the bike was that it was extremely soft, the 2015 was. Um, and the cool part is it's actually mated to an upgraded rear end component back here as well, a KYB uh, adjustable for preload only in the rear spring, which is also stiffer. So the, the story here for the 2019 R3 as you can kind of start to gather is, you know, lower clip-ons, stiffer suspension, more aggressive kind of starter motorcycle, which is really cool. I really do appreciate the Yamaha actually is going after something like the KTM RC390 in this class. Now, one thing that is actually completely unchanged for the 2019 R3 versus the original 2015 R3, the first gen, is the engine. It's still sporting the same 321cc parallel twin engine, making the exact same amount of power. I believe it's about 42 horsepower, if I remember correctly. If it's that's incorrect, I'll put the right number up here on the screen. Sorry, I don't remember. Um, and, you know, even though a lot of folks in the class, uh, you know, they've gone up to... 400 cc's or 399 cc's in the case of the ninja 400 which is putting out 47 48 horsepower keeping it a2 compliant giving it a little bit more torque uh the ktm rc 390 is that big single cylinder um i think that the r3 punches in the same class because of the sum of the parts here um i don't think that the engine is a limitation for it, but it does remain unchanged from the 2015 model. So that's something you gotta keep in mind. Another thing that does remain exactly the same is this front brake system here that Yamaha has been using for a little bit. Uh, this is your standard, I don't even know if it's a Takiko caliper. It, it's just like a no-name caliper, and I believe it's the same unit that uh, Yamaha was using for their 2015 model. Um, largely unchanged, still a single-sided disc here, and that's, you know, and that makes sense. That's part and parcel for the class here. Uh, it would be extremely shocking to see uh, an R3 with dual-sided brakes or something like that. Um, that would, one, increase the cost dramatically for this motorcycle, and would probably make the profit margins for Yamaha a lot slimmer if they had to keep competing on price. And two, you know, even though the unit is a bit wooden feeling, uh, I have noted that in some of my rides and reviews of this bike, uh, the feel through the brake lever is not the best, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It's, you gotta remember, this is a bike that's priced at right around five grand. You're not gonna get uh, expertly feeling, um, you know, Brembo front brakes from it or anything like that. So just something to keep in mind. Also new for 2019 over the 2015 models is these colorways. Uh, so this matte black finish right here on the R3 is new for 2019 and beyond. Um, they've done quite a few different colorways of this motorcycle. Uh, they've got Team Yamaha Blue, they got the black, and they got the white right now for this generation of the R3. But in years prior, they had the, uh, the white one, they had the red and the white one, excuse me, they had the blue one. I think they had a black one, but it wasn't matte black like this one. And it certainly didn't have this really cool uh, R3 logo right there on the side, which I think looked absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, I would say that's definitely some of the new differences for this motorcycle as well. 
So overall, I would say the story here for the new 2019 R3 is it's a more aggressive beginner bike. A lot of the drawbacks that I had with my 2015 R3 have been sort of addressed with this one. I wouldn't say fully, but have been addressed in a major way. So I used to think that my 2015 R3 was a little bit too soft. Uh, if you wanted a more sporty kind of ride, uh, Yamaha now has a stiffer suspension package for you. And it's in these cool gold forks, which look really neat. They have also made it so that the ergonomic economics package is a little more aggressive. They kind of put the clip-ons underneath by 22 millimeters and put them under the triple clamp. That's something I did on my 2015 R3 to give it more of a, a sort of, you know, lean down, hunkered in kind of sport bike vibe. Uh, it now comes with proper tires on it, which is one of the first things I did on my bike. I got those bias ply tires. And even as a newer rider, I was like, I don't think this feels quite right. Uh, and then I went with some Diablo Rosso 2s on my R3 and it was like night and day difference. Uh, it just felt so much better and these come factory with the sport max dunlop tires which is a great tire that you know the ninja 400 comes with those tires and they're pretty awesome so um I would say Yamaha's done a great job at making an iteration of the first R3. This isn't, uh, you know, even though it looks really different than the first one, uh, it's not a radically different motorcycle than the other one. But really the story here is that they've made a bike that is a little bit more sporty, a little bit more aggressive, and is just going to give everyone who rides it just a little something a little bit more fun to kind of work with. Um, the other really big change is the dash as well. Let's talk about that. So one of the big stories here for the R3 is the new dash. Um, I'll put up a photo here right around this area of what the dash used to look like on the R3. Uh, so the big story here is that, you know, it's got this full digital dash now. Uh, the readout is much more clear, I think, with the tachometer here up at the top and then huge speedometer reading right here, digital gas gauge right over here. Um, you don't get any like difference in options or anything like that. All you really get is uh, a couple changes here for whether you want mpgs you want your uh range on your tank which i usually keep on there because i want to know how much i got left on there i got your odometer and that's about it really um but as you'll notice here i just saw this so i've been averaging 54.4 miles per gallon on the r3 which is pretty neat um if you press this other button here this is just gonna you know reset your your trip meters and that kind of stuff if you want to reset your first trip, that's all you got to do there. Just press that button. So even though it does look really neat and it gives you a really cool little gear position indicator here, read after the tachometer and the miles per hour, functionally, it's just about the same thing as the old one was. It just looks a little bit different, um, which that's okay. You know, that that's a bit of a change rather than an improvement in my opinion. But um, yeah, don't, don't expect this uh, dash to be some sort of miracle maker for you. I, I just recently found out that the KTM Duke 390, the new, I think it's the 2019, has a full color TFT, which is pretty crazy for the beginner bike class. But um, overall, I think this is a very successful dash, even though I personally do like the old analog clock with the hexagonal shape that it used to have. I thought it looked really distinct and I loved seeing uh, an actual needle uh, giving me my RPMs and that kind of stuff. But when you're on the bike, it's extremely easy to read. Actually, I'll include some vlog footage here. Uh, even even on the GoPro, you can really, really clearly read it. So overall, I'd say a pretty successful dash change up for Yamaha. So we are now down here at the shift linkage, which you'll probably think is pretty strange right we're down here. But I just found out that the R3 actually has uh, two overdrive gears, which is incredibly useful. So with these smaller bikes, uh, because they're geared so uh, aggressively to give you good acceleration, that kind of stuff, the issue can arise that if everything is geared that way, once you're in top gear, uh, you're spinning, you know, nine, 10,000 RPMs or something like that. So Yamaha went ahead and made fifth and sixth gear uh, an actual overdrive and a sort of hyper overdrive uh, gears. So whenever you're on the highway, you're not going to be spinning massive RPMs, which I think is a really cool change up for it. Um, mostly because, you know, your, your fun gears are really one through four. Uh, I would really hesitate to, to say that anyone's having fun on a 300 in fifth or sixth gear on a twisty road. You're probably never hitting those, uh, gears when you're on those kinds of roads. So I think it's a great uh, option for the R3 here. And of course the other major change are these forks. Uh, we already mentioned that they came with the forks, but the fact that they are now gold and upside down just makes it look extremely premium on this motorcycle. Um, it makes it look like a much more expensive motorcycle with the gold upside down forks as opposed to the old black solid colored right side up forks. Uh, makes it look like a proper sports bike, which is really, really neat. 
So guys, that's gonna conclude uh, our overview today of what's different on this new R3 versus the old R3. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you wanna learn how you can win this motorcycle, because I am giving it away along with our Suzuki SV650, click those links below on Patreon or on our merch page to buy some merch and get entered to win. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Someone's gonna win this bike. It might be you. Someone might be watching this right now and might actually win it, which is pretty crazy. If you wanna check out more of my thoughts on this motorcycle, uh, feel free to watch some of the other episodes we've done uh, for the Beginner Bike Giveaway series. I will put a playlist down below where you can check those out. Um, but yeah, overall, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.